In this video, we're going to take a look at the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, the Windows ADK for Windows 2012 R2. And we're going to take a look at creating an auto unattend file in order to automate the installation of Windows through Windows Deployment Services. So there's a couple of things that we're going to need. We're going to need the Windows uh, 2012 R2 ISO. Uh, mine is the evaluation version. And we'll also need the uh, Windows ADK setup file. This file is a free download from Microsoft. And we need that in order to have the tools available to us to create these auto unattend files. This is the website. Uh, I'll post a link below the video so you can find it as well. Uh, it might not be exactly intuitive when you go to look for it. It's the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit for Windows 8.1 update. And that's because Windows 2012 R2 pairs well with the Windows 8.1 client operating system. So anytime you see 8.1, it's usually going to be related to 2012 R2. And in this case, you could download this and use this uh, in a Windows 8.1 environment. But you can also use it for any of these other operating systems as well. So when you click download, you're going to get this file, this ADK setup. And when you run it, you have the ability to download all of the necessary files to prepare for an offline installation, or you can install right over the internet. Now, it's a couple of gigs, so it's kind of a biggie, but uh, it will take a little bit longer. I already have created a new folder here uh, in my C drive in a folder called ADK. Uh, I have a folder called install that has all of the files already downloaded. So it's going to make my installation a little faster. And the other thing that you're going to need is the install.wim file. Now, normally this lives in this ISO. But we need it actually in a read-write location. You can't use it off of the DVD itself. Uh, we need to be able to make changes to this location. So what you'll want to do in order to pull this file out is you'll want to mount that particular ISO and go into your sources folder and there will be an install.wim file. It happens to be the biggest one in that folder. So if you're looking for it uh, you might just choose to sort by the size. It's the 3.8 gig file. So it's a biggie. You gotta copy that over into its own location as well. So I have my installation here. Notice it's the exact same ADK setup, but when this does uh, install and bring in all those files locally, it tosses a couple other folders in here that actually contain everything that you would normally go to the web for. So I'm going to run this setup so you can see how the installation goes. And we'll get some of these pieces together. You'll see it takes 3.6 gigs. It's not a small install and you can choose whether you join the customer improve, uh, the customer experience improvement program. I'm going to say no for this one and I'll accept the license agreement. Now that 3.6 gigs does include a bunch of things that you may or may not really need to work with. In my case, I am going to leave it with just a couple of these components. The Windows pre-installation environment as well as the deployment tools. I'm going to leave off the rest of this stuff for now and notice it dropped me down to three gigs. Not a huge savings, but uh, it saved a little bit. Now my installation is actually going to go pretty quick because I already have it all downloaded locally. Depending on your internet speed, this could take a lot longer. I'm also running on a solid state drive. Anytime you're testing in Windows Server, especially when you're talking about deploying software or uh, working in Hyper-V, when you might have a couple of virtual machines in your test environment. Uh, a solid state drive is going to save you a ton of time. You're going to get more done and uh, when you make a mistake, if you need to revert back or try again, it makes that process a lot less painful because everything's going to go so much faster. You're probably going to be bottlenecked by the hard drive in most of your testing when you're working with Windows Server. Um, CPUs are pretty fast these days. Um, you'll want a ton of RAM, but that's relatively cheap, and it's a good idea to get a ton of RAM no matter what 
you're working with on your desktop operating system too. Uh, my machine happens to have 16 gigs and uh, 8 gigs would be fine for what we're doing. So now I've got this installation uh, completed. Uh, it is now available to me and it goes pretty quick as long as you already have that locally. Find that Windows System Image Manager and here it is. Now it doesn't look like much yet but we need to make a couple of changes here in order to make everything work properly. First thing we need to do is we need to create a uh, distribution location. Uh, you might have one already if you've been playing around with this in the past but if this is your first time using it on this machine you won't have one yet. So under tools you can create a distribution share. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ADK folder. I'm just going to keep everything all together there. And I'm going to make one called distribution. And what it's going to do is it's going to toss in a couple of other folders there. If I jump back here, you're going to notice a couple of other folders get placed in there. These are all the additional things that are going to be tied in when you create your uh, your auto unattend file or if you manipulate your Windows image or anything like that. Anything you might need to add to that installation file. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to get our Windows image um, which I had back here in my C drive and I can do that under file. I can select my Windows image. Now I happen to be using the install.wim file from the Windows 2012 R2 evaluation ISO. So when we open this, you're going to see there's a few different Windows Server editions on that disk. The one that I'm going to choose is Server 2012 R2 Server Data Center. Now this is the one that does have the GUI. It is not the server core. Uh, server core is up here. Uh, and I'm just going to work with this one right now because this is the one that I'm using in my test environment to uh, deploy. Now the next thing is we need to have a catalog file. What this is going to do is it's going to look through that installation image and it's going to catalog everything that we have so that we can modify it. So we can't find the catalog file because it's not here yet. So do we want to create it? Yes, we do. We want to create this catalog file. So again, this goes much, much faster on a solid state drive than on a traditional hard drive, but that's okay. No matter what you've got, you will get through this process in a couple of minutes, but it does take a couple of minutes to mount that image, because it's pretty big, and to look through that image and build a catalog. So you just have to pack your patience and let this process complete. So now my catalog file, after a couple of minutes, is finished building. And you'll notice there's a catalog file sitting here. It's a CLG file. Um, it's not huge, but it had to look through a lot of data to determine what parts are in that Windows installation. Those are all the different parts that we can then manipulate in an auto unattend file. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new answer file. We can do that here under File. And we can either open an existing one or we can create a brand new one. We're going to create a brand new one from scratch. So you know how Windows normally installs. You know, it boots up and it asks you what language to work with. Uh, it asks you to accept the license agreement. Um, it asks you how to partition your disks. All these different pieces that go into that installation. When we look at this answer file, it will probably look pretty confusing to you at first. Don't let that throw you off too much because once you start to understand what these different components are, it's not too bad. As long as you understand that the Windows PE is the setup program in Windows, this is the program that runs the setup for Windows. Since you have to have something running in order to install Windows, Windows PE is that mini version of Windows that actually is running in the background when you install. Uh, there's a couple of other pieces here that you can start to toss in automatic components to that gets deployed when your system is set up. 
and then you go through all of these different uh, components including at the very end the out-of-box experience so it does the installation here's everything that happens during that installation which is normally all automatic for us anyway but you can manipulate some of those parts and then here's the questions it asks when the installation's over so what we're going to try out here is we're going to set in a couple of the initial settings just to get a little sampling of what your capabilities are so we're going to go back down here to the windows image pane and we're going to look into the different components again this looks scary at first um, but when you realize that a lot of these you probably don't need to work with uh, it, windows allows you a ton of control a lot of these you might not need to work with we only are looking for certain components so we're actually going to go all the way down here to the Microsoft Windows International Core WinPE. Okay. And we're going to uh, expand that out just to take a look in there. And now remember, this is what we're talking about when we are looking at settings for that setup program for Windows. This is that setup program. So we can right click on it and we can add the setting to pass one Windows PE. So what does that mean? I am going to automatically configure some of the answers to the questions that the Windows PE component asks. So what might I put in automatically in that setup program? Well, there's a couple of things. Everything here and everything here get tossed in there. So now over here in my uh, answer file, I can make some of these answers uh, set already so that I don't have to answer them when the installation happens. Like en-us is appropriate for me. Uh, the system locale, en-us. Uh, the UI language, as well as the user locale. So what this does is it says, don't ask me that first question about my language because I'm telling you that this system will always install ENUS. Um, we can go into the setup UI language too. We can toss in EN-US there. Now it feels like we're doing the same thing again and again and that's just because of how verbose the settings are. We have a lot of different choices to make for each individual piece. So kind of have to bear with it and uh, just understand that there will be sometimes you're typing the same thing in seemingly more than once. It's not the most user-friendly interface but once you know what you're doing you can move around in here fairly effectively. We're gonna go back to this Windows image pane and we're going to add in uh, an additional part portion. Uh, we're gonna go to the AMD 64 Microsoft Windows setup. This is actually the settings for the setup of Windows. And I'm going to add that to Pass 1, Windows PE. Now, again, when I mean Pass 1, Pass 2, Pass 3, this is just the different sections of the Windows installation as they go through. The first being that setup program, all the way down through you know, setting everything up, and then down to um, asking for your username and password once everything's configured. If you expand this one out, you're going to see there's a whole lot more stuff there, more stuff to work with. If we expand this out and we go and look at disk configuration, uh, in this case, maybe we want to define exactly how to use our hard drives. Rather than uh, having to select this manually, let's make this an automated process. So I can right click on disk configuration within the answer file and I can insert a new disk. What this is saying is I have a hard drive and I want to automatically deploy some settings for that for every time this installation happens. Think of it this way. You get a thousand PCs that all look exactly the same and you need to install Windows the same way on every single one. Do you really want to be clicking next through all these different menus? No. What we want to do is we want to give Windows all the settings we can right from the get-go even as granular as how to configure that hard drive. So now here's my disk. Now within my disk configurations I have a disk 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new create partition item. What this is doing is it says on the disk that you're installing to create a partition and how do we want this partition created? Well the very first partition, partition 1, is going to be 350 and it's going to be type primary. So I'm saying that let's create a relatively small boot partition. It's going to be the first partition on the disk and it will be a primary partition. This is where the after the post test happens. Uh, it looks to the hard drive for booting. This is the hard drive that tells where to find the operating system files. We'll make another partition. This one's going to be order 2. I'm going to leave the size blank because I want it to be all the rest of the space. And um, we're going to make this extend true. Over here, I'm going to set the disk ID to 0 because disk 0 is the first disk on the drive. So maybe this is a ton of laptops and disk 0 happens to be the hard drive. Uh, we're going to create a little partition for booting and then partition 2 with all the rest of our space for um, our operating system. And now we can go to this insert new modify partition component and we can add that in here too so we can make some settings so first we're just creating partitions carving out space on our disk now we're going to go in and modify these and tell it exactly what's going to go on these disks for example the format and TFS the label we can say system the order is two I'm sorry uh, this one actually this first one we're going to do boot um, order is going to be 1. And the partition ID will be 1 as well. So NTFS, oh and we also need that one to be active. The active partition is the one we boot off of. So we're telling that partition, you know, the active partition, this is the one that knows how to boot. NTFS, uh, the label will be boot, it'll be the first partition. And then we can add a new modify partition for uh, the second one, disk two, or partition two, will also be NTFS, and the label on this one will be system. This is where our operating system will be, and the partition ID will be two. So now, during our installation process, while it reads this file, it's going to create new partitions. It's going to wipe the old disk and create new partitions, and it's going to first carve out those two spaces and then it's going to format them and use them for the operating system. So this is the start of completely automating your Windows installation. There's a lot more here, more than I would ever want to have to dig through, but uh, if you need to find a particular piece of this in order to um, customize your installation, especially if you need to do it many, many times, uh, this is a great way to go. When you're ready to save your answer file, you can choose to save your answer file. I'm going to save my answer file in my ADK folder. And I'm going to put it right here with my uh, in my distribution folder. And I'll call it auto unattend. And it attaches the XML um, file extension. So here it is, autounattend.xml. I can open this in any different editor, but this is really all it is. This is what we're seeing. This is the process in which this installation will happen. And your installation will look at this file and say, oh, I need to create a partition. 350 megs, and it's going to be a primary. I'll make another partition, etc., etc. These are all the settings we've created. Now, as messy as this uh, Windows System Image Manager sometimes feels, 
it's a whole lot messier to have to do all that by hand because you know one little uh, greater than or less than sign could throw off the whole thing that's not to say you couldn't go in here if you really wanted to and modify all of this by hand it's just a much messier way to do it and more prone to error so there you have it there's our auto unattend file and we could use that during our windows installation if we want to